Hello and welcome. Microsoft Excel is obviously a very powerful application once you understand how to use its formulas. Now being able to use those formulas in a way that allows you to do complex applications allows you to be more flexible with it. It means then that when you see things like using budgets, loan amortization tables, inventory lists, warehouse inventory, and home inventory means that you can structure a number of different ways to track, calculate, and analyze your data. But there are certain aspects of creating formulas and calculations that you're going to want to know. For example, the one that you're seeing right now is a way of being able to create a formula that you can use in certain ways in your Excel document. We will be talking about equations like this in the course. We're also going to talk about setting up basic logical formulas, which gives you a lot of latitude over how you're going to display your data. And even though it's not numerical, you have text formulas, which will again help you to be able to create more flexibility with your documents. We'll do the same with lookup formulas, financial formulas, and date and time formulas. We'll take a closer look at using the sort command in data. We'll talk about formulating your data into a table, as well as a special kind of table called a pivot table, which will help you to display your data even more effectively. We'll talk about both chart and map formation in addition to the 3D map formation. And we'll talk about exporting your Excel data into other Office documents. We'll demonstrate cell protection and collaboration and we'll talk about the interface with Google Sheets. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in the first video. Welcome back. Now you recall that one of the ways that we create a formula is we can do it manually. For example, if we wanted to multiply one cell times another cell and have the result here in column L, we can do that. So for example, what we would do is we would write the equal sign we would then click on this cell. We would then place the asterisk. And then we would then click on this cell to get this result. And of course, one of the things we can do is we can grab this entire result by the handle, drag it down, and then we can have the same result on all of these areas. Now the question arises, what if all that you wanted to do was you wanted to multiply everything in one column only by one of the numbers here. So for example, you would want to see everything multiplied in this column by the various numbers here, which is not what you see here when you copy the equation down. In order to do that, you would have to create what's called an absolute reference. So in this case, let's eliminate all of these formulas. See, if we look at them, you'll notice then that each version of the formula when it's copied adjusts to the sheet. So for example, you'll see that this third one is D5 times I5, which is everything in this row. You'll see that the next one is D6 times I6, which is everything in this row. So when we copied this formula down, all we did was we adjusted the formula down by each row. Again, now the question would be, what if all we wanted to do was to take this one number and multiply it by everything that's here, but we still wanted to have the ease of being able to copy that formula down. Well, what we would do is what's called an absolute reference. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to change the absolute reference to this column I3. And that means then that this cell will stay constant in your calculation. That would mean then that what we're going to do in our equation is we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the I. We're going to put a dollar sign in front of the three. We're then going to click enter. You'll notice then that this formula doesn't change. But what we're going to do now is we're going to eliminate the formulas we copied down. We're now going to copy this formula down. And what you're going to see is you're going to see that you have a case where everything in one column is multiplied by one value in one cell. And we can also make sure is that the I in the formula is constant, but we can have the three to be relative. So in other words, we can make sure that we stay in this column 
but the three will be relevant to where it falls on the page. And so in order to do that, we're going to leave the dollar sign in front of the I, and we're going to then leave the three as relevant. You'll notice then that our formula doesn't change up top, but when we drag it down, the numbers then change. And that's because we've left this three as relative. So again, this gives you added flexibility in your formula creation. So to scroll through the different possibilities, what you're going to want to do is to highlight your cell, put your cursor into the address bar, and then you can hit the F4 key. And the F4 key will help you to scroll through the different options you have in creating an absolute reference. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, to create a formula using a relative reference is what you'll be doing by default. So, for example, if we go to this cell and were to manually create a formula, we press the equal sign, we would again press a cell, we would then click the actor, in this case we'll add, and then we would then add in the cell next to it, we would then get a result. And then if we wanted to copy that formula down, what we would do is we would then drag it down, and what you'll notice then is that each of these sums are just these two numbers added together on the row. Now, in order to understand how a relative reference works, we're going to change this. We're going to delete all of these formulas. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to then start with this cell and we're going to create a manual formula. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add the result in cell I plus the result in column D, except for we're going to go up one row. So instead of using I4 plus D4, we're going to use I4 plus D3. And we're then going to press Enter. And so you'll notice then that this cell has the sum of the number in cell I4 and D3, as we said. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now drag this formula down. And you're going to notice the same pattern. So for example, the sum in cell L5 is going to be the value in I5 plus one cell down in D4. And you'll see that pattern persist throughout the entire list that we copied. So relative reference works based on the position of the initial formula and then adjusts down on a relative basis. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.